I have created two new products which are available now on Patreon. So let's take a look at what they are and how we can use them. So the first one is already on your screen here. It is the Inside the Mind shelf. It is a shelf that is super easy to install. You just install it through packages and it, it will recognize everything. You have to change like one line. There's installation instructions in the download, so take a look at that. But there are currently three tools in this shelf. There will be more as time goes on. I'll build some more and add them in there. But for now, there are three tools that I'm including. The first one is the mesh import, which leads us to the second thing, which you saw with the intro animation. Let's go ahead. We click on the, the icon there, and then we navigate to the folder where all of our models are stored. And once we have done that, we can click accept, and we get a little library here that we can select the models from. So all of the models that you're seeing here in the, um, in the library are models that I have made. They're all abstract models and they work great for all sorts of different things um, like RBD simulations like you saw in the intro. You can also use them for vellum simulations and other things, whatever you wanna do. They're UV'd, and ready to go. We have high, high poly and low poly models for most of them. Some of them just don't work super great with the low poly models. Uh, they are just really, really difficult to get the, the shape to stay without having them be a, a ton of polygons. So some of them don't have low poly models, but most of them do. And with this library, you can see that we have a few things. So we can adjust the thumbnail size here. We have an imp a couple of options down here as well, so we can import all into the same geometry node. And then we can also import them into the stage context. So if you have this first option checked, then it's gonna import them into the same node, whether it's in the SOPS context here or inside of LOPS. Either way, it will import them into the same node. If you uncheck that, it's going to import them into their own node. So let's just select a couple of the models here, and then we can press OK. You can see that it's going to go ahead and just import those in there for us. If we go ahead and come back to that and we select a few of these, we can uncheck that and you'll see that it takes a little bit longer, but it goes ahead and imports them all into their own geometry nodes. So you can split them out however you want. And the way that this library works, like I said, you have to put everything into the same folder. So they have thumbnails here that you can generate yourself. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So we have the folder here and in here we have all of our, our different models and then we have the pictures that are acting as the thumbnails. So with these thumbnails, they have to have the same name as your, as your models. Uh, so just make sure that they're named the, the exact same and then uh, without the low res or high res um, suffix, as long as they're named the same thing that they will, a, they will recognize their, their thumbnails. And then also they need to be, I think I only included JPEG and PNG as what they will be recognized. So just make sure that you export um, a JPEG or a PNG as far as the file type. As far as the file types for the actual models themselves, they can be Limbic, OBJ, FBX, and USD. USD is a little bit more complex, so it'll just import them as a file node. It won't import them kind of the proper way, uh, but it does bring them in to uh, a file node if you wanna just bring them in that way. But uh, it's a little bit more complex to bring them in the proper way. So just keep that in mind. So let's move on into the next tool, which is the node color picker. So normally if you want to change the color of your nodes, you can come and just turn that on. The shortcut for that is C. And with that, you can select a different color for your nodes. Or if you want a custom color, you would have to come in here and you have to right click and you'd have to click on edit color. And then you can change it based off of that. But that's kind of a pain in the butt. So I made this tool so if we click that, we get this little pop-up and we can save colors here as well. And any nodes that we have selected, we can change their color. This also works for network boxes and also for sticky notes as well. So we can change 
anything that we have selected in our network view here. And once you're done, you can just close it out. I have it currently bound to the C key, which is normally this brings up this color palette. If you would like to do that, you can right click on the shelf tool, click edit tool, come over to hotkeys and you can see here, if you click edit, you can change which hotkey it is assigned to. So for me, that's the C key and you can set that up if you'd like as well. Now, the last tool that I have is the duplicate node tool. So if I bring this up, just select the node that you wanna duplicate and then we can press duplicate and then you can select the amount of times that you wanna duplicate it. So I'll just set something like three and then you can see that it has duplicated our node three times. And that works for whatever context you're in. So if I wanna duplicate this a couple times as well, then we can go ahead and duplicate that out as well. So that covers the tools that are in the shelf. It's uh, just a couple of quality of life things that make your, your life a little bit easier inside of Houdini. Some things that I wanted and uh, the color picker was actually asked about in uh, my Discord. So if you haven't joined my Discord, make sure to join that in the, the link is in the description for that. So go ahead and join that and you can hang out with me in there. But anyways, this has been a quick overview of the tools. They are available on Patreon as well as all of the different models. You can grab those on there as well. So hopefully you guys can play around with them and have some fun with all that. If you make anything using these abstract models, be sure to let me know and show it to me so I can see what you're doing with it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel on Houdini. So if you wanna learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those videos out. Like I said, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.